right. how much I help somebody else. So yes, I did that. So you, did I answer your question or did yes, I skip yes, the question? Yes, yes, okay. yes. You, you, you did. You did it perfectly, yeah. by the way. Okay. Not to be negative here, but uh, what were the biggest challenges for both of you while doing business here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. How about you, Raj? <laughs> uh, I remember I was about 28 years old. Mm -hmm. And I had gone, I started working when I was 24, 23. I worked for an engineering company, then I worked for a manufacturing company, then I worked in sales for about three or four years. But then I worked for sales for a long time. Uh, when I was 28 or 29, I remember driving down Makati Avenue and I had my old beat up Gemini diesel car. And I'd made a deal, a business transaction out of, uh, completely on my own. And then I realized that, Raju, something inside me told me, now you know how to do business. Okay. You know how to be chagga. You know how yeah. to be a negociante. No? Okay. Prior to that, you think that you know business. You read the books. You go do your MBA. And you get all the mentoring you want. But there comes a time. There comes an aha moment in your life. You say, kuha oh, okay. uh, I speak French, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you get it. No? So you get it that you know that you have to take care of the supply side, you have to take care of the operation side, you have to market yourself, mm -hmm. and you have to be like a hawk, like a really crazy hawk watching over your business. And you know it's going to turn, it's going to turn around. So I figured that out when I was 28 or 29. So the personal challenge or the challenge that I faced before that was not being able to see beyond a certain uh, curtain that is ahead of you. We all think, kaya ho yan. Pero there comes a time, you really know it. Uh -huh. And so the paradigm is that you don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Once you understand it, then you know you can apply that philosophy to any business, whether you are into IT or the new age business, or you put up a barber shop. You someday know it that you can do it. So that's the challenge. Oh, okay, okay. Just to remind, okay, Raju, is this that? Uh, I think I think your question is ease of doing business in the Philippines. That's what it's related. Yeah. Ease to. or difficulty? Ease of doing business. Uh -huh. uh, uh, my apologies, but Saturday I was reading the Philippine Daily Inquirer and Philippine Places number 146. 146? 146. In ease of doing business. Uh -huh. yeah. Singapore Places 1, Hong Kong Places 2. Now, uh, I think that's a wrong measure. That measure needs some help. See, when you say ease of doing business, they're probably talking about uh, registering yeah. with the BDT the or the BOI room. or the SEC. You know? Maybe that's challenging because the paperwork. But ease of doing business should be many other things. It should be people, it should be financing, it should be location, it should be infrastructure. So I don't think that's taken into account. When I took up, uh, when I started my first business, I'd never done business in any other country. I was a kid, no? Yes, it was challenging. Yes, it was tough. But uh, there were other conveniences. The fact that you can seek support from Filipinos, you know, the uh, the culture of Filipino of helping each other, that should be measured in. That's yeah. never measured in. No? So you have that convenience. So Just maybe sure. going to SEC is a challenge because of the structure, but going out into the world of business, yeah. that becomes easy. Ah. No? So from my perspective, uh, yes, that part is tough. And I'm sure SEC and BOI and BDT and the Department of Trade are working at it constantly. I know some of them are my friends. I hope they don't hear me talk about this right now. But yes, they are working on it. In a couple of years, I think we should really rise up that uh, ranking soon. We all look so. We should. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. What, matter what? of number one is ownership of company equity. Mm -hmm. So you have 4060 only if you are doing business locally and generating an income locally. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a foreign company and I want to say put up a shoe shop yes. and I'm going to sell to Filipinos, then I can only own 40%. Mm -hmm. yes. But if I'm going to sell my shoes to America, then I can own 100% of my business, plus I get incentives for generating a dollar income. All right. So that's ownership. It's a challenge. You go to US, any Tom, Dick and Harry, that's not a four letter word by the way. <laughs> Tom, Dick and Harry can own a business, even a small one, 100%. So that's US, that's Singapore. We don't have that here. Because some of our uh, laws are based, were made in the 50s, no? Mm -hmm. So they are being corrected right now that they will allow small business ownerships. The challenge there is that the setup of the business scenario in the Philippines is that there's only 5% large corporations. Mm 
Uh -huh. 95% is all small businesses. So when a foreigner comes in, he's either got to be a big business or he's either got to be 100% export yes. generated income. So the other 95%, a small guy comes in, he has a challenge. That is the specific challenge. And as a foreigner, you cannot open up a restaurant and own it the 100%. So that may be, if it's worked out, then the ease of doing business in this country will jump up several ranks. Oh, okay. So that's the thing. But again, you've got to look at it from a positive perspective that challenges in terms of owning and registration may be hard, but putting up a nice Persian grill in Greenbelt gives you good income because you have lesser competition. Uh -huh. So that's the plus interesting. side. Interesting. Right? Okay. Yeah, that's interesting because most, uh, most foreigners, uh, or more even some Filipinos, that I know don't know this aspect. We always stick to this, what we call the 60-40 rule. So there's 100% ownership yeah. uh -huh. as long as actually 90% of your income is generated overseas, not 100%, 90%. Okay. So if I make jackets, for example, and if I export 90%, then I'm sell. allowed to do 10% locally. That means my overruns, my leftovers, or maybe I just need to test my product in the market. So you can do that. So it, plus you get incentives from BOI. Oh, fascinating. Wow. The call centers, you know, the, all those yeah, buildings, exactly. lesser taxes, lower wages, lower power rates, lower utility rates. Though. Oh, really? In EPSA. Oh, really? In EPSA. EPSA and all those buildings that are now are, EPSA certified. We're actually shifting from the negative aspects, the yeah. challenges. Now we're moving the to the positive yeah. side. Yeah. 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 So would you encourage other foreigners to do business here and why? Yes, uh, it's been my advocacy for the longest time. Mm -hmm. I used to chair the Filipino Indian Business Council from the year 2002 till 2009. I just surrendered the chairmanship of that thing. And I've been always inviting, especially in my case, Indians, and of course, when other Asians come in, that come and put up your business here. Number one, see, there's a lot of land. You just move out of Metro Manila, property ro uh, rates go down like 500%. So if you go to the provinces, you can own land, uh, you can get you know, lease property for the lowest possible way. And there's a lot of talent here, which you cannot get anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And English speaking talent, right? So if there are minor hurdles about registration and a certain legalities with the barangay and the municipal, etc., once you overcome that, then it's a flight. It's a flight. And it's safe now. You know, people think it's unsafe. It's safe to do business in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, uh, we have a I should invite. In fact, Obama should... <laughs> listening to this one. Yeah. I think he is. I think he's watching. No, Any, anyway, we've got a tax employee. That's a very good question. Yeah. Me? Uh, you heard of the thing called work-life balance. Uh -huh. right? Work-life balance. In the States yes. and Europe and other developed countries, they have this, this family day mm -hmm. and try to relax and be unstressed in your yeah. work life. <laughs> no? Here in Philippines, when wow. you go to work, when I go to my office, when I used to have a lot of employees, it's like going into family. I swear to you. You walk in, the culture and the relationship that you have with your workers here, with this team over here, the relationship you have is like family. Yeah. So you don't really have stress. Your work life is balanced. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the Filipino worker, the Filipino employee, is number one, is loyal, is honest, and he's a happy person. <laughs> is it easier to do business in the Philippines than in your country in particular? Oh. And why the Philippines? Hi, or Susan. gentleman. Uh -huh. Oh, Susan. 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 So, Susan. So I'm assuming Without that's a woman or a girl. Yes. Huh? Okay. So your question is easier. But uh, if you had asked me, was it better to do business in my country? Today, I would tell you that it is much better to do business, much better to do business in India because of the size of the economy. Because it's a growing economy. It's really growing at 10% per annum. It's easier to do business in the Philippines, but better to do business in India right now, today, in this century. But about 30 years ago, it was easier and better to do business in the Philippines. The reason is very simple. Philippines has an underground economy, and that's a challenge. Most other countries don't have that. So the business you do is a bit of a struggle. Nothing's on the surface. So that's the reason. I hope you, that answers your question. Okay. So easier here, better there. Okay, so before, okay, so going so back to uh, our guest. Who won? Uh, oh, let, let's, who let's won. tell uh, who won. The I CD. think uh, for the uh, CD, 
Um, I'll say, uh, how, how would you say? Uh, I'd like to second. give it to Susan because that's the only name I know. Okay. <laughs> Susan.